we just want to encourage you now just to seek the Lord and, pr- and worship and, and sing, uh, praying in the Spirit as we, as we uh, enter into his presence. Thank you, Lord. Kumodia sutudo na sodi, Amaruria kotu sutu, Amaruti si, Amaruti si tsu, Amoti ki amoti ki asiri amori, Orosati komataro sari amoti. Sati koturi aniye, Amaru satu kotu satu, Oriya Masuriya kati, Riso rondo no saramba baba basi. Sutu to Saria Patura Niari O Maru City O Kuria Masu Ekimarani Suria Taki Patatoriana. We consecrate, we consecrate to you. Hallelujah. If anyone has um, anything they want to share, anything that the Lord has revealed to you or spoken to you as we've opened here tonight, you can share. I haven't felt the Spirit like this in a very long time. But as, as I was sitting here, I thought of a Mary and Martha. They prayed for Lazarus. And he died and was dead for four days. And when I'm sitting in this, and, and when Christ came, they said, we were waiting for you. And what they didn't realize was that thank you, Lord. <laughs> it's four days. To God is a thousand or four minutes. That's right. And so when he came, it meant nothing that that Lazarus was dead for four days. And he rose them from the dead. Amen. And at that time he smelled. And it was nothing to Jesus. And Lazarus never said a word. Never thereafter. In the Bible, nowhere does it say that he said anything. Because it was no big deal. He was dead for four minutes. And that that is so deep in my heart that if you have a big mountain in front of you or a deep valley, just remember the time is nothing to Jesus. He will come. Yeah, he, he will rectify it. That's yeah. Amen. Uh, that's enough for me. Thank you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Anyone else have anything to share before we begin? <clears throat> yeah, the Lord just showed me as uh, we were worshiping, and that God kind of just whispered to me. He's been whispering it to me for a month now that we can never, ever get enough of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to continually fill us. So that we're so overflowing that everywhere we go in society, people around us, just coffee shops, malls, workplace, they just literally get soaking wet because we're overflowing with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hi. I was just thinking when I sung that song, because that's my favorite song lately. You know... We need to get rid of our unbelief. 
If we could just get rid of our doubting and unbelief, we could be seeing these miracles too. And I'm not speaking for I'm speaking for me too. <laughs> but uh, let's let's uh, let's risk t- trusting God and say I'm going to let my unbelief go. I don't. I'm not going to hold on to it anymore. If I don't get the answers I want in the prayer, it doesn't mean to say that God didn't hear them. Okay? Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Come on. I don't think I need it. Come on, man. Yeah. Okay, irrespective, I'm going to raise a hallelujah. Amen. The scripture says, in everything, give thanks. In everything, every difficulty. That's the way out of the difficulty. Amen. 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 We touch and agree with that. Anyone else? I have a, uh, I'm going to share. We're we're doing a study with Kenneth Hagen. And Kenneth Hagen was lying in his, on his, uh, in bed with a heart condition that the doctor said he was going to die from. And so three doctors say he's going to die. The minister came to pray that the Lord would take, give him peace as he dies. But he didn't want to die. And so he, the Lord spoke to him and said, don't be focusing on the symptoms. Because so, he knew the Bible. So then he said, well, Lord, what should I focus on? Focus on, um, on Jesus Christ and, yeah, and the word. And so he said, focus on what he has done, not on your symptoms. So amen. Um, I'm just going to agree with him, with the Holy Spirit. Uh, The Lord has brought me this past week. Um, I found a guy on YouTube called Nate Johnston. Nate and Christy Johnston. I don't know if you ever heard of him. He is so filled with the Holy Spirit. I think God is bringing us into the season. We're here for a reason, to be set free. And what he did, the Lord brought him shortly after he got married, five and six hours being still in God's presence. And he's got such an anointing now, and God just wants it to deliver us, but he wants us in this time to truly seek the Holy Spirit, to be still. We're here, this is great, but this is only the beginning of what God wants to do. He just wants us to go in that quiet place with him so that he can finish the work that's already been started here, but he wants to finish that work. So yeah, you're right about the Holy Spirit because Nate Johnson, I don't know, I just found him. I mean, I'm on YouTube, I I see things, all of a sudden the Lord just plundered him on me and it's like, okay, Lord, I'm listening to him now and for I'm listening to so many, but it's Holy Spirit. So just before you spoke, I invited, I said, Holy Spirit, come and shower yourself. Just come in your fullness tonight. It's the last night we're here together for a while. So Lord, Holy Spirit, just come in your fullness tonight because we, and I hope that everyone here does have their intimacy with the Lord and get deeper with him because we're here for a reason. We're here to be set free. And uh, Holy Spirit, we invite you tonight. We want you to take control, and we want your will to be done in each and every one of us. It's a Friday night. We could be doing other things, but no, we choose to come after you, to come after this healing, to come after your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I like uh, Nate Johnson, and I like Jeremiah Johnson, and John Burton, and Bert Farias. Uh, a lot of my favorites, you, if you follow us on Facebook, you'll see that. I want to let you all know uh, that we'll be back November 15th. Last week I said the 8th, but Greg stretched out his vacation. I have to confess. <laughs> <laughs> so it's November 15th. We'll be uh, back teaching, and it'll be all through the fall, winter, into spring. Praise the Lord. Okay, so we have a new, uh, someone here that's new tonight. We welcome you, George. And this is um, a prayer that we, and George just asked Jesus into his heart last night. Maybe he was, uh, he was with us down in the street, uh, ministering with us, uh, to this, uh, feeding the people on the street. So he, uh, I, I, I go after people and make sure they're, they know Jesus, so he, he prayed with me last night. So this is a, a prayer for anyone that hasn't been here before, George, that uh, it deals with about 25% of, um, of curses that could be upon our lives that we need to be set free from. Yeah. So we'll, we'll pray this together. I'll lead you in prayer. 
Lord, dear Lord Jesus Christ, I believe you are the Son of God and the only way to God. That you died on the cross for my sins and that you rose again from the dead. I renounce all my sins and I turn to you, Lord. Lord Jesus, for mercy and for forgiveness. And I believe I do and I believe you do forgive me. From now on I want to live for you. I want to hear your voice and do what you tell me to do. I humble myself and renounce all pride, religious self-righteousness, and any dignity that does not come from you. I have no claim on your mercy except that you died in my place. In order to receive your blessing, Lord, and to be released from any curse over my life, I confess any known sins committed by me or by my ancestors or others related to me. So in your mind, just quietly confess anything that comes to your mind that might be in your own personal life or in your family that you know about. Okay. Lord, I thank you that I Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. That you, I believe you have forgiven everything. That I have confessed. And now I want to say I also forgive all other persons. Whoever has harmed me or wronged me. I forgive them all now as I would have God forgive me. In particular, I forgive. Just name anyone that comes to your mind and quietly to the Lord. Furthermore, Lord, I renounce any contact by myself or anyone related to me with Satan or with occult power in any form or any kind of secret society. Also, I commit myself to remove from my house any kind of occult objects that honor Satan and dishonor Jesus Christ. With your help, Lord, I will remove them all. And now, Lord Jesus, I thank you further that on the cross you were made a curse that I might be redeemed from the curse and might receive the blessing. Because of what you did for me on the cross, I now release myself from every curse, every evil influence, and every dark shadow over me or my family from any source whatever. I release myself now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, Lord, because of your people's prayer today, Lord, as your representative, break every curse that has been over any of these lives or any of these people. I revoke those curses now and I release them from them in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Now let's thank God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Now, so we just pray this together. I thank you, Lord, that you have heard my prayer and that every curse over my life has been revoked and canceled. I thank you that Satan has no more claims against me. 
or in my family or anything else that you have committed to me. I thank you, Lord, that from now on, as I walk in obedience, your blessings will come upon me and overtake me. Thank you, Lord. Now, this is a prayer that we pray before we do the message. To um, It's a covering prayer. So I'll leave you that in that too. Father, we thank you, Father, we thank you. that you have given us power and authority, power and authority. Over, serpents and over serpents and scorpions against principalities, against, principalities, against, powers, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness, the of, the darkness of this world, of this world. Against, spiritual wickedness, against spiritual wickedness in high places which is our inheritance over the kingdom of darkness. Father, this authority is not achieved because of what we have done, but solely by what you have accomplished in and through your beloved Son, in whom you were well pleased. That name, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, which is above all names in heaven and on earth and below the earth. Now, Father, we declare in Jesus' name that all strong men, powers, hairs and joint hairs, plans, orders, and assignments are bound, cut off, and destroyed. The strong man's goods are plundered by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We sever all communications from you to your workers of iniquity here in this place. We also declare that all spirits will leave quietly without manifestation or disruption. There will be no backlash or retaliation. We declare in unity where two or three are gathered that no weapon formed against us will ever prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us in judgment shall never prosper. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. As we declare, the blood of Jesus Christ is against you. Together we stand on the victory of the sacrifice of the cross, the empty tomb, and the resurrection and ascension to heaven of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For the Father's acceptance of that blood atonement work. And we thank you, Father, for your beloved Son's sacrifice and for the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit, which raised Jesus from the dead, which was sent here to comfort us, seal us, teach us, and lead and guide us into all truth. For that and much more, we all thank you. Amen. Okay. Thank you, Lord. So tonight's lesson is on addictions, which is, uh, there's a lot of different ways that can take hold of people, but we'll go through this. And it's on... Uh, usually gives a definition here. Addictions, compulsive behavior, compulsive psychological need for the use of a habit-forming substance as heroin, nicotine, or alcohol, characterized by tolerance and by well-defined psychological symptoms. Oh, I didn't want that. No, okay, watch where you're... 
clicking. Yeah. There we go. I'm using the arrow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Characterized by tolerance and by well defined psychological symptoms upon with withdrawal, broadly persistent compulsive use of a substance known by the user to be physically, psychologically, or socially harmful. Webster's Online. So that's from the dictionary. Addiction cinnamons. So this is something the Lord showed Gail that cinnamons can um, cover a lot of the areas that we're dealing with. A habit acquired tolerance, acute alcoholism, addictness, addictedness, Addiction, alcoholism, amphetamine, withdrawal symptoms, barbiturate, addiction. Well, I've got way on me there. Okay. Uh, nicotine, addiction, physical dependence, psychological dependence. Oh, sorry about that. Okay. We'll just back it up a bit there. Okay. Stay on the... There we go. Sorry. Say yeah, in Jesus' name, yeah. Okay. Withdraw okay. All right, we pray for your help here. We claim the blood of Jesus over this computer and everything here in Jesus' name. Okay, so physical dependence, psychological dependence, tolerance, withdrawal sickness, withdrawal symptoms, craving symptom cinnamons, a habit, acquired tolerance, acute alcoholism, addictiveness, addiction, alcoholism, uh, we'll not mention every word here, but you can, you can see all these different words up there that are associated with addiction. Universal wolf, arbitrary, chain smoking, chronic alcoholism, coveting, crash, dependence, devoured, dipsomania, drug addiction, drug culture, hungering, hungry, itch, itching, lust, mad with lust, passion, pruence, Pruent, sexual desire, thirst, thirsting, thirsty, sickness, withdrawal symptoms. A good description of addictions is anything you set your affections on other than God, idolatry. We can even be addicted to our yucky puckies, evil spirits in operation. Addictions are rooted in the need to be loved. The principality of the unloving spirit, self-pity and rejection can be involved here. So the, if lessons five, six, and nine have to do with self-pity, rejection, victimization. Also, strife and envy, envy lesson four, go hand in hand with drunkenness, sexual actions, and addictions. The enemy of your soul will have a person looking in all the wrong places to repair, repair the breach, to try to fix this feeling of not being loved by God. Others, and also unloving feelings towards oneself. Believing this lie upsets a, a balance of serotonin and dopamine levels in the body. Dopamine equals positive feelings. Serotonin equals mood influence. It causes a feeling of disconnection from the peace of God. Drugs are then used to raise or tweak levels, causing a dependence and a false peace. I know with my, I was raised with a father that always smoked. So, and I, and I know other people that smoke. And so I never got into it because my, I, I tried it when I was a boy. I sneaked my father's cigarettes and he saw me going up the field one day and smoke going up. So he knew, <laughs> he knew I was trying them. And, uh, but then when I went to buy them, I thought, my goodness, my money's just going up in smoke. And uh, I, so I never got, and I saw what it did to my father. He'd have to get up in the middle of the night, hack and cough and clean his lungs out. And I thought, nah, I don't want that. So I never got into smoking, but I had a real hold on my father. And it, smoking, I talked to one guy in GM. He said, I got set free of alcoholism, but I can't get set free from smoking. So different addictions, can ha there could be different roots involved, but it, smoking, for one, can be, have quite a, a hold on some people. And um, so I know, I shared with Gail about Farida has a sister 
who smoked for about 50 years and regularly, I'm not sure how many, maybe over a pack a day, I believe. And so we have gone to seeing Joan Hunter. Joan Hunter in her book mentions that smoking at the root of that is rebellion. So if three dimensions to her sister, there's rebellion. That's at the root of your smoking. So her sister confessed rebelling and she asked God to forgive her for rebelling when she was young. And the Lord set her free from, she hasn't been smoking. And she's living in a house with somebody that has been smoking. So sometimes when you're around somebody else that draws you back in, it never drew her back in. So, uh, so sometimes you have to look, ask the Lord to show you what the root is, uh, why you are doing what you're doing. Because there could, there, a lot of times, roots are hidden. A lot of times we have a, a picture here with a tree the tree, you see the tree, but you don't see the roots. The roots are underneath. So sometimes you have to ask the Lord, what's at the root of, of the problem that you're dealing with? And what we think influences every aspect of who we are and how we feel physically. A fascinating study, one of many of this kind done at Ohio State University, shows that healing can be slowed by as much as 40% when one is stressed. Uh, Stress. I was just talking to Alex tonight who shared here about stress. He worked for the TTC. I worked in GM. And we both had, at times, work that was stressful. And so stress can have an effect on you. Considering that stress is the body's reaction to our thought life, our state of mind is quite literally determining our mental and physical health. Dr. Caroline Leaf. Remember, stress is fear. We have about 200 trillion cells in our body. That's a lot. Each one performs millions of chemical reactions. The human body undergoes about 400 billion chemical reactions per second. Woo. Every second of our lives. This definitely shows us the importance of God's word when it says to take our thoughts captive and the importance of forgiveness. 2 Corinthians 10.5 and Luke 11.4. I found it interesting in the book, The Secrets Men Keep, by Steve Atterburn, that when a man chooses to believe, despite how he may feel, that he is fully accepted by God, he is then free to accept himself. This applies to both sexes. He shows in his book that we may not have moved past our parents' expectations. He posed three questions by Patrick Means to determine this. Did my father communicate to me that I was beloved? Did he let me know that he was well pleased with who I am? Was the blessing unconditional? We must move on from the earthly expectations of others to our true identity in Christ. We see dramatic changes in the atmosphere and in people's lives following the teaching on the unloving spirit and then the sharing of God, Father God's love for us. And we're talked there about what our father, if he demonstrated unconditional love. I can remember when I was a teenager saying to my father, do you love me? And you look back at that and you say, why would you do that? But it was sort of like that there was an emptiness there. And my, God, my father was a good guy in a lot of ways, but... Years ago, a lot of parents didn't vocalize that or demonstrate that. My, I can remember my son, when he was like four or five years old, we, he was going to be going away. Uh, his mother was way up north. And I say to my mom, which is his grandmother, Mom, give, my, give Joel a hug goodbye. And she took him in her, her took Joel in his, her arms and swung him back and forth. And I thought, what's going on here? She didn't know how to hug. And so I was raised without getting any hugs. So the Lord brought Florida and I together. And so she, she taught me how to hug good. She's a good hugger. <laughs> and so, uh, but years ago, there was a lot of people. My grandmother was a lovely lady. She never hugged. So sometimes you're raised in an atmosphere where you're not getting the confirmation that you are loved and that you are, that you are uh, every, everything that they want you to be. So that can have an effect down the road on on your life. When the person finally realizes the love of God and their identity in Christ, their hypothalamus will signal the brain stem and organs in the body to excrete the proper levels needed, and there will be homostatus with true balance 
and true peace. Now, I can remember I was very withdrawn when I was a teenager. I, I only asked one girl out to, uh, when I was going to high school. Or, yeah, high school. I think, uh, yeah, high school. And she turned me down. <laughs> uh, so then I, I tried to get pen pals. And I, one, one girl in Australia said, you should come see me sometime. So I thought, I'll surprise her. So I went all the way to the Australia, knocked on her door. She surprised me. She had a boyfriend. So... <laughs> So it just didn't seem to work out because the Lord had flurried it here for me. But anyways, uh, after I became a Christian, I, my self-worth really, I, I wasn't an introvert anymore. Florida can tell you, <laughs> he likes to talk now. <laughs> so when you ask the Lord to be your savior, he really d- does a lot of healing, but we still might need to, to be set free of different things, but the Lord does a great work when you first get saved, that's for sure. In addiction, addiction, in it, addiction, the person is in bondage to an unloving spirit. They do not consider themselves worthy or have value. They have believed a lie and have not experienced Father God's love. They are drowning out the trauma, voices, regrets, painful memories, and emotions, an actual deadening of the mind. Example, drunk with alcohol. When someone does not feel good about themselves, they will seek out something to fill that void and produce the temporary dopamine rush. This can be alcohol, drugs, pornography, video games, eating disorders, legal and illegal drugs, masturbation, misuse of food, ungodly relationships, poor movie choices, gambling, smoking, foul language, even the sinful habit of gossip. So here's a picture, cycle of addiction. I will start at the top here, unmet needs, old behavior patterns, unsatisfying outcomes, confusion and frustration, pain, fear, anxiety, building anger, frustration, feelings of powerlessness, explosion of anger, rage, physical release and physical release and relief. Someone is hurt by what happened, guilt, remorse, shame, and then it just, it's a cycle. So sometimes you meet people and you wonder, what, what's with them? Why are they acting the way they are? Well, we don't always know, so we just pray for the people that, <laughs> you know, you see somebody, they might be, I was driving on the road today, people are, I've had six people pass me today on double lines or in, in places where they shouldn't pass, and I thought, my goodness, what's going on with them? That they, they want to get there right away. But there's a thing on the internet where it talks about the garbage truck. And we should have, should have had that. But this guy has somebody pull out in front of him. And the guy says, yeah, it's, a gar- it's like a garbage truck. They're full of garbage. And they're looking to, to dump their garbage. <laughs> so it's, it's a good, I have to find that sometime. It's a really good uh, little thing that's on Facebook. Possible traits with addictions. Victimization. Workaholics. Guilt. Shame. Condemnation. Dependency, codependency, poverty, will not face reality, adultery, fornication, mental illness, lack of responsibility, molestation, weight problems, arrested development. Do search on blog for info on this. Abuse. Oh, yeah, Gail has a thing on arrested development. You, some people, you mentioned that, you, what's that? But the Lord showed Gail that there's a, a, a spirit behind arrested development. That some, in other words, things that didn't that didn't happen didn't work out right when the, uh, in your younger years, right, Gail? Is that right? You want to explain that a bit? Actually, I was teaching at a church in Florida, and sometimes the Lord will drop things down. But this was a banner over someone's head, and it said "arrested development." I had never heard of it because so, I was inquiring, like, what's going on there? So when I went home, I started to research it, and there's a booklet uh, by Wynne Worley on arrested development. He wrote it because he had it, and he had uh, terrible anger and, and addiction. And so he writes all about it, and part of the things that we use here is from his book. But yes, it uh, can come in with hurts, trauma, right? Little pieces that go to the soul and a person could have five doctorate degrees, but a little piece of the soul 
is trapped, right? So uh, you might see it, you know, sometimes somebody might collect dolls or things, not always, but it can be a sign of arrested development, coloring. You notice all the coloring at the registers when you check That's out? Right. Everybody's coloring now, right? But some of those things aren't very good. Those round circles, are, some of them are occultic, right? So you gotta be careful what you're coloring. But they do it like to, to relieve stress, right? Coloring, but what is that replacing? It's replacing going to God. We go to God when we have stress or, or something's going on, right? So we don't wanna replace God with coloring. We wanna, you know, that could be enjoyable, the colorings. Just be careful of those circles. I forget what they're called. Anybody know? Mandela. Mandela's, thank you so much for that. Yes, it's, it's a cultic, okay? Okay, thanks, Gail. Over a decade ago, I was helping a friend with his limo business. There was a man around 50 years old in the back seat, rather under the influence. I started to share the gospel with him, and he began to cry. He had been raped as a young boy and had never told a single person until that night. This is an example of the horror that people carry buried alive inside them. My friend who I've gone into the prison with down in our j local jail in New Brunswick, he, was, he went through a lot himself being raised, and so uh, things that abuse. And so when he's with other people, he'll pick up on that right away, uh, uh, that they've been gone through something, and he's, he'll know that they're hurting, and he encourages them to share, because sometimes just sharing will help set people free. So he does that quite often with guys on a one-on-one -on -one basis. He encourages them to, to get it out, to share with him, and so that can be a healing right there. Please know that the hypothalamus gland that is in charge of all the other glands in your body is a body scanner. It scans the conscious and the unconscious thoughts. So the things that are stuffed way down there d don't disappear. The man in the story carried that for 45 years. God's word says to cast our cares on him. Are you carrying something today? Even if you do not have an addiction, the hypothalamus is scanning the buried stuff and your body is excreting, in this case, an overabundance of harmful chemicals, which will eventually lead to disease or bondage. That is why it is so important to review these lessons and set your goals to be an overcomer. www.nuggetsforyou.wordpress.com is a good place to go. That's, uh, uh, that's uh, Gail's blog. Galatians 5, 19 to 21. Now the deeds of the flesh, we could read this together. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sens sensual, in idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these, of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. By flesh is meant corrupt nature as before, and by the works of it, not only external acts of sin, but inward lusts. For such are here mentioned among its works as hatred, wrath, envyings, and both external and internal acts are so called because they spring from the flesh or corrupt nature and are what that urges and solicits to and are wrought thereby and are what denominate and show men to be carnal. These are said to be manifest, not that they are all and always publicly done and are open to the sight of men, for they are works of darkness and often done in secret, though they are always manifest to God and the searcher of our hearts and will be brought to light in the day of judgment. But they are known to be sins in some measure by the light of nature and especially by the law of God. And a clear case it is that they are contrary to the spirit. 
both to the spirit of God and to the principle of grace he forms in the heart. And that such who live in the commission of them are not led by him, nor are under the influence of his grace. That's a, sort of like a, a summary of Titus 2, 11 to 12 by John Gill. How you look trying to hide sin from God. <laughs> <laughs> I saw something else like that. It was like a donkey hiding behind a tree when he's like, trying to get him in the barn. He, you can see the donkey on both sides and he thinks he's hiding behind the tree. Yeah, that's us in front of, uh, nothing's hid from God. Luke 21, 34. Let's read that together. Be on guard so that your hearts will not be weighted down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of life and that day will not come on you suddenly like a trap. And take heed to yourselves, your souls and bodies, to your lives and conversations. Be upon your watch and guard, lest your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness, with excessive eating and drinking. For these, as they oppress and burden the stomach and disorder the body, so they stupefy the senses and make the mind dull and heavy and unfit for spiritual and religious exercises, such as reading, meditation, and prayer, and cares of this life, concerning food and clothing, what you shall eat and or drink, or wherewith ye shall be clothed, all such anxious and worldly cares, being that to the soul, as intemperance is to the body. For there is such a thing as being inebriated with the world, as well as with wine. And so that day come upon you unawares. The day of Jerusalem's destruction, and this suggests that such would be the carnality and security of some persons, and so they would be surprised with ruin at once. See Luke 17, 26 to 30. Remember our land is compared to our soul, mind, will, and emotions. Jeremiah 16, 18. Let's say that together. I will first doubly repay their iniquity and their sin because they have polluted my land. They have filled my inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable idols and with their abominations. Isaiah 33, 15. Let's say that. He who walks righteously and speaks with sincerity, he who rejects unjust gain and shakes his hands so that they hold no bribe, he who stops his ears from hearing about bloodshed and shuts his eyes from looking upon evil. Revelation 9.21. And they did not repent of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their immorality, nor of their thefts. Acts 3.19, therefore repent and return so that your sins may be wiped away in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. The absolute necessity of repentance is to be solely, solemnly charged upon the consciences of all who desire that their sins may be blotted out and that they may share in the refreshment which nothing but a sense of Christ's pardoning love can afford. Gail gave Farida and I a couple of books, and one of them is called uh, Fire on the Altar, I believe, and mentions many of the people who God used in the past. And I noticed, like with Charles Finney, and um, there's others, that they really stressed repentance. And there was a, a great call to, for people to, to be holy. And uh, that is that is what we need in our walk, is to, um, is to be holy. And to, if, if you sense there's anything in your life that you need to repent of, it's, uh, I've also heard the term, keep short accounts with God. Uh, if, if you know you've done wrong, right away confess it and ask God to forgive you, because that's how we keep our, our closeness with the Lord. Blessed are those who have felt this. It was not needful for the Holy Spirit to make known the times and seasons of these dispensations. These subjects are still left obscure. But when sinners are convinced of their sins, they will cry to the Lord for pardon and to the penitent, converted, and believing. Times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord. In a state of trial and probation, the glorified Redeemer will be out of sight because, he must, because we must live by faith in him, Matthew Henry. 
Jeremiah 15, 18 to 19. Let's read this together. Why has my pain been perpetual and my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Will you indeed be to me like a deceptive stream with water that is unreliable? Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you return, then I will restore you. Before me, you will stand. And if you extract the precious from the worthless, you will become my spokesman. They, for their part, may turn to you. But as for you, you must not turn to them. Why is my pain perpetual? The pain of his mind, his uneasiness for the good of his people, which was likely to last, having no hope of a change for the better. Or it may design the pain which they gave him by the reproaches and persecutions of him, which seemed as if they would have no end, and my wound incurable, which refuseth to be healed. The same thing is meant as before. The allusion is to an old ulcer or obstinate wound, which no medicine can affect, is desperate and deadly. And such the prophet reckoned his case to be, or however de depreciates it and expostulates with God why it should be so. Will thou be altogether unto me as a liar and as waters that fail? Such God cannot be, nor did the prophet think he was. He knew that he was God that could not lie and that he was faithful to his promises and would not disappoint the faith, hope, and expectations of his people. But he feared he would be thought to be so by others, by his enemies, who would triumph over him and say, where is thy God? Did he not promise to make thee a defense city, an iron pillar, and brazen walls? Is he as good as his word? Is he not like a dry brook whose waters fail? Are not thy hope and expectation in vain? Who has been trusting to him and depending on him? And it is as if the prophet should say, Lord, let them have no occasion to speak after this manner, nor suffer my faith in thy promises to fail. Show thyself to be as thou art, a, co a covenant keeping God and whose faithfulness never fails. To which an answer is returned to the following verses. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, if thou return from thine unbelief, diffidence and impotence and repent of them expressed in the preceding verses, then will I bring thee again or restore thee. Pardon his sin and return him to his post and place to his office and ministry in it and confirm and establish him therein, and thou shalt stand before me. Not only as a petitioner for the people, see Jeremiah 15, 1, but as a servant of the Lord, attending to his word and waiting his orders and ready to execute them, it denotes his stability in his office. And if thou wilt take forth the precious from the vial, take precious truths, comparable to gold, silver, and precious stones, truths more valuable and desirable than thousands of gold and silver from those doctrines which are worthless and contemptible, comparable to wood, hay, and stubble, and everything that is mean and vile, these faithful ministers should separate one from the other and not mix and blend them together, or precious souls, truly gracious ones, who are precious in the sight of God, are redeemed by Christ, by his precious blood, and are adorned with the graces of the Spirit, these are to be distinguished from the vile, from sinners impotent and unbelieving, that live in sin, in defiance of the law, and in contempt of the gospel. A difference is to be made between them, delivering out comfortable words to the one, and denouncing severe threatening to the other. Doing the reverse of the false prophets, Ezekiel 13, 22. Thou shalt be as my mouth to the people. Speak what I command thee. And whatsoever thou sayest shall be as if I had spoken it myself. Let them return unto thee, but return not thou unto them. This is said of the people of the Jews to whom the prophet was sent. And the sense is 
that he should not at all comply with them or conform to their humors or flatter and soothe them in their sins as the false prophets did. But if they returned to him, attended on his ministry, received his words and messages and agreed and conformed to him and followed his directions and example, it would be very well. But otherwise, he was not in the least to give way to them or go into any sinful compliance with them, either with respect to doctrine or practice. John Gill. That's a mouthful. Jeremiah 30, 17. For I will restore you to health and I will heal you of your wounds, declares the Lord, because they have called you an outcast, saying, it is Zion. No one cares for her. Luke 4, 18, let's say that together. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Psalm 109, 21 and 22, let's say that. But do thou for me, O God, the Lord, for thy name's sake, because thy mercy is good, deliver thou me. For I am poor and needy, and my heart is wounded within me. Corporate deliverance prayer. So this is our, our prayer for being set free. All right. Yeah. So we'll pray this together. Heavenly Father, well, just, I'm, 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 no, oh, no. Come yeah, there we go. No. Yeah. Okay, we'll get organized here. There we go. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I choose to confess, repent, renounce, and forsake participation with addictions. I ask for forgiveness and renounce all curses associated with the spirits assigned to me and that the curse be broken in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I recognize and take responsibility in the generations of my family on both sides going back to Adam and Eve for our participation with all spirits of, of addictions. I release myself from any guilt, shame, condemnation, and any curses due to addictions. Lord Jesus, I shatter, cut off and dissolve the power of the spirits of hurt, deep hurt, rejection, Sadness, grief, bad relationships, divorce, tragedies, rape, molestation, words, failure, outcast, black sheep, scapegoat, ungodly soul ties, codependent, abuse, insecurity, torment, rebellion, Self-bitterness, self-hatred, torment, lonely, isolation, ungodly order in the home, rebellion, self-pity, dyfunction, lying, double-mindedness, deception, selfishness, self-murder, bitterness, Depending only and solely on drugs and not standing on God's word. Illegal drugs, food addictions, denial, generational addictive patterns and personalities, unclean, unloving spirits, perversion, compulsiveness, Fear, Fear. Unbelief. unbelief, rejection, rejection. Accusation. accusation, envy, jealousy, jealousy. self-destruction, 
self-violence, hatred, unforgiveness, not discerning the body. And that has to do with taking the Lord's Supper without dealing with any sin in your life before you take it. That's what that means. And so is there anything else that comes to your mind that you feel that we need to uh, uh, add to that list? Anything that comes to your mind? Lust. Lust. Everyone say lust. Lust. Anybody else? Anyone else? There you go. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. Is that everything? Okay. Okay. So now we'll finish. In my life. In my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the power of the Holy Spirit. I cancel all Satan's power and authority. Over me. Because of addictions. In Jesus mighty name. I cast you out. And command you to go quietly now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command all tormentors and principalities of bitterness, self-bitterness, jealousy and envy, rejection, fear, doubt and unbelief, occult, and any other spirits that have been assigned to me because of addictions to leave me now without causing any damage and go to the dry place. Thank you, Father, for the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Thank you for healing my heart, my soul, mind, will, and emotions, and body. Please refill me, cleanse me, and please reveal your loving words of truth to me. Now we'll wait in silence to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. If there's anything you want to share, you can raise your hand. Anything the Lord's done for you, what you've experienced or heard. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay, these saints have repented and renounced and asked for forgiveness for addictions in their generations and even in themselves. Now I command all spirits involved with addictions come up and out and go to the dry place along with any underlings, overlings, and gatekeepers. Come up and out and go to the dry place by the blood of Jesus and in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now take a deep breath and blow out in Jesus. Now everybody give God glory for your freedom. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, I believe that's, that's all. Okay, so now we'll be taking a break for four weeks, I believe it is. Yes, four Fridays. We'll be back on the fifth Friday from now. November the 15th, we'll re resume November the 15th on Friday. And this all happens in the village of Curtis, just east of Oshawa, on Trolls Road. Okay, you're all welcome to come and join us. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have any testimonies they'd like to share? Share with others so we can all be encouraged by what God has done for, for us all, you know? Yeah. Agnes has something. If, it's, uh, if you want to get up in front of the camera, feel free to do so. This is not meant as a testimony. I said earlier, why don't we risk the Lord? I mentioned about doubt and unbelief, and I'm thinking, we're letting the enemy win when we get like that. So how would you like to try a little test? How about, I want, you don't have to do it out loud, think of something big that you really want from God and it hasn't happened yet. We saw that on the screen. Just one song. 
So I'll give you a few minutes to shut your eyes and, uh, and talk about it. And then we, I'm going to... I'll, you can agree and pray with me, but I will do the praying. <laughs> and I'll tell you know who off. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus. Okay, have you thought enough? All right, then repeat after me. Father God, Father God I, repent I repent of my unbelief. I want to believe you for greater and better things. Lord, we've asked for something big right now. And it's not us getting the answer. It's not us even trying to make it work. It's it's just your wonderful grace and your love for us that you're going to give us what we're asking for. Because, Lord, you, you want everything in our lives to be wonderfully, wonderfully made perfect, perfect in your eyes. We have no perfection in our own eyes. And we certainly have not earned any trust in you. But we do trust you tonight. But we do trust you that you can do for us. That you've done for many other people. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 That's good. Yeah. Yeah, that was precious. That was good. Oh, we have a hand over here. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I should have said this last week, but um, no. Okay. <laughs> but um, I spent two, I mean, five days in the hospital a couple of weeks ago, and many people from my church were praying for me. But um, then on the fourth day, Pastor Gail, I call her Pastor Gail, um, she phoned me while in the hospital. I was in the hospital. And she prayed for me and had me pray some things. And she did some casting out of generational curses and different things. And um, I, it was so deep, so powerful. I felt it so much, so strong in my heart while she was casting out and all that. And then, um, so then she said goodbye. Then about an hour after, I began to feel so free and my joy came back because I was kind of, you know, what's going on with me, you know. So joy came back to me, and um, I was really happy and joyful. And a few people came and visited me that evening. And so I felt I was healed. Mm. And um, yes, and the next day, the doctor came and discharged me. So that was what Amen. he said. I was, I was okay. Amen. So praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Gail. I bet the doctor couldn't figure it out. Yeah. Okay? Didn't make sense to him, right? In the natural. But we serve a God of the supernatural. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Anyone else want to share? Oh, I see a hand up over here. If you feel free, if you want to get in front of the camera, we're on Facebook Live right now as well, by the way. So you'll be going live out to the people. This really is to reinforce what was said earlier about the absence of um, parents expressing love and affection for their children. And I'm of a certain age group where it was the last thing the parents ever did was to tell their children that they loved them. And some of you are here are probably from the same sort of background. 
Consequently, what happened to me, my life was driven by achievement. You know, Dad, please endorse me. Does, th does th this work? So I was constantly pressured to achieve, to achieve, not for achievement's sake, but for endorsement and love from my parents. About five years ago, so I'm fairly old. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. So I was at a conference, it's part of the Apostolic Church here, and we were in, at a conference in Quebec. A prophet came up to me, and he put his hands around both sides of my face. He looked right into my eyes and said, God really loves you. Then he walked away. Wow. You see, what happened then was I was free. I found, you see, even in the area of walking with God, if that blockage is there of affirmation, it'll impact our ability to serve God. We don't serve him as a friend, as a father. We serve him as a master, as a principal of a college or whatever. So what happened was it freed up my heart and my work for God. Now, I'm passionate about the kingdom of God. Amen. But that passion is now not driven by achievement. It's driven by a an attempt to please my father. And the, the pleasing is not, again, driven by a need for, will you endorse me? But just by the pure pleasure of being able to cause God to have pleasure. So God really loves you. And particularly, particularly when you fail. I failed numbers of times, but when I come back to him, he embraces me. He embraces me. Now, this is not to endorse failure, but it's to endorse the fact that he loves us and in addition to that, I remember saying to God, but God, I'm, I'm so, what, how terrible, how, look at the things I've done. He said, what did you expect? You're a sinner. You see, we think here we have the picture of a perfect God and we think we've got to be the same as him. Yes, we have. But remember where we're coming from. And again, I'm not excusing sin, but I'm, a, but I'm attempting to deal with the accuser who comes to us and says, you're hopeless, you're a failure, you'll never be any good. But what he's done for me then, he said, look, you're a sinner. I don't expect you in that sense to be perfect, I am. But in, by the grace of God, he's given us his Holy Spirit that we can progressively become perfect in him. Thank you. Not, not to keep you guys too long, but I feel I can speak to the very same thing. Um, you guys probably know a uh, quick little background. I was abandoned by my father at the age of two. I think a lot of Christians seem to have had that in their background interest. Because remember, Father God says, I'll be father to the fatherless. So he'll step in, right? And I'm getting shivers from the Holy Ghost as I just said that. <laughs> Praise God. So he stepped in, although I didn't know he had stepped in until much later in my life. Probably not until about I was 40. Um, patient fellow, isn't he? Might take many years before you even know that he stepped in. <laughs> but anyways, um, I was trying to get my identity um, you know, by men by man instead of identity from God. And when my wife married me uh, seven years ago, uh, was it, honey, within the first year of marriage, you got that word for me? Just like the word was given to Ron, she looked at me directly in the eyes, just in the middle of, we were doing something, just suddenly she stopped. She looked me right in the eyes and says, the Lord says, 
Your identity is in me. And I'm telling you, you talk about a, <laughs> a moment. <laughs> the Lord had caused me to be married to a prophet who then spoke <laughs> into my life. <laughs> so that was pretty neat. Um, I don't, I, yeah, so I just wanted to share that, you know. Ron uh, also shared beautifully, and I just wanted to just add to that story. A anyone else want to maybe just, uh, I bet you we. He's a God that redeems the time, and he's a restorer. That's right. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, he does redeem the time, says so restorer. That's correct, yeah. Oh, we have a, a hand in the back. Maybe come up and uh, do a little sharing, too, just because it's going to be on our Facebook page, and people are going to benefit from it. Um, when I was growing up, um, as I mentioned before to Gail, that the Lord took the first 14 years out of my life because I, um, I don't know what happened, but I know it was bad. And then um, when I was 13, my dad was still alive and went to my grandfather's uh, funeral, and I got uh, sexually molested by the priest. The year later, um, my dad committed suicide. And then my mom tried committing suicide after that too. So I was raised up without really a mom or a father. But God is faithful. But I'm the only one in the family that went through everything that we're going through here. I'm the only one. I've got five siblings. No one has done drugs. No one has done the drinking. and No one's done the sexual thing. I'm the only one. And I think it's because of what's happened in the past that began when I was 13 with that priest. So anyways, I just want to say that in this time of teaching, there has been so much healing. This is a place of um, God going deep. If you're willing to go through it, God is able to deliver. So I gave my life when I was, I was uh, with a guy. Um, I was 19 years old and into drugs and everything else. My brother said, Jack, you're going through a rough time. I think you should come to church with me. I gave my life to the Lord, but was on not good ground. So then I married a man, which he was raised up in a Christian home, but he wasn't living. Uh, he was living a Christian life, but he didn't know the Lord intimately. Yeah. So until we broke up, we broke up. Uh, I was 40 years old, and our marriage broke. But that's when we found the Lord. And God, again, faithfulness. You found the Lord at 40, truly. Yeah. I found the Lord at 40. My life changed. And the Lord told me to take him back. I didn't want to. But it was the best decision of my life because now we are serving the Lord with everything we have. Our boys, yeah. we're, we're believing Okay, our boys are not serving the Lord at all, and they're in a lot of these things right now. But because of God's faithfulness in myself and the way we're praying, we're just believing. So this is a place of hope. It's a place of restoration. It's a place of healing. It's a place where we all need from the past hurts to become higher in Christ. So thank you for what you guys are doing. Hey, wow, eh? Oh, beautiful. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord, eh? Yeah, you see, we have a few testimonies, and then people feel moved to give more, and it, it mushrooms. You've got something, yeah? Maybe want to, okay, just, just with your voice, that's okay. However you feel comfortable. Should I face them? Yeah, if you like, sure, turn around, face them, yeah. yeah. Okay, when I was born, my parents were told I wasn't going to live because I had asthma, and back in the 60s, they didn't have anything for asthma, and... Fortunately, I did live, and um, when I was seven, um, my brother molested me and my sister, and then when I was 13, um, because of being on prednisone, which is something that heals your lungs, I, I was really big, and um, I started throwing up. I did that until I was 34. Um, I met a man when I was 16. He used to abuse me. He would come in the bathroom when I was in there, if I had, if I had a bath. He would put my head under the water and hold me there until it was almost too late. And if I had a shower, he would rape me. Um, when we were driving on the 401, he would punch me in the stomach, and then he would punch me in the face, and then just up and down. And I remember people 
driving by in their cars on the 401, and they saw it, but nobody honked their horn or st stopped or nothing. And um, when I was 17, um, he got me pregnant, and he wanted the baby at first. And then when I was four months pregnant, he told me I had to have an abortion. And I was 17, I had no choice. Um, he took me to Toronto General, and back then, I don't even know if they do this now, but they inject um, some kind of solution into the womb, which kills the fetus, and you have to go through labor and deliver the dead fetus. And I, that was terrible, I was by myself, my parent, nobody knew I was there. Even he wasn't there. And um, like I said, you go through labor, and then the, the baby came out, and the nurse wrapped it up and took it away. And I regretted that for a long, long time. But God recent, recently um, gave me a vision, and he showed me a birth certificate of my, now that I know, was my daughter. And her name, her name is, um, oh, no, I forgot. Kylie. Her name is Kylie. They named her, and she forgives me, and God forgave me, and she was there holding Jesus' hand. And I would finally forgave myself. Um, eventually, I left. There was one other time where he took me up north of Pickering and tried to strangle me and throw me out of the car, like dead. But God must have been there because I was able to get my feet up yeah. in front of him and push him off, and he hit the window. And that stunned him, and I got me in enough room to straighten around. But I didn't. The police were at my parents' place when I got home. But I told him that they didn't hurt, that he didn't hurt me, so he wasn't arrested. But um, after that, I finally left him when I was 23, and then I married a man that was alcoholic, and he abused me. And then after that, the divorcing him, I had three kids. I left him, and I met another man that was 10 years younger than me, and he abused me. So I was abused for 37 years. And it's just been eight years since I've been um, born again. And I I'm, I can just tell you, I'm different as night and day. I remember going to her group, and a man named David, he used to pray for me in our parking lot of our apartment. And he talked to me, it made me feel better because I wanted to kill myself. And God must have sent him. He took me to Agnes's group, and the first night I went there, and Catherine reminds me all the time, I took my dog. Okay. <laughs> and all I did was cry for the first while. But now I'm here, I'm one of her leaders now, and I went through all of that, but I think God, I used to pray to God to let me die because I didn't want to live through it. Yeah. And then I used to believe that that's what he wanted me to go through, that somehow I was being punished. Lie from the enemy. Yeah. You know that now. <laughs> I know that now. But now I'm born again Christian. God is there every day for me. And they brought me, God brought me to Agnes, and I want to thank her for everything she that she has done through God for me. God. He gets all the, the praise, yes. but I thank Agnes for helping me. Be in the hands and feet. Yep. That's beautiful, eh? Agnes being the loyal hands and feet of the Lord, right? To, to take her out of all that terrible place that, 37 years. Yeah. I can well imagine why she'd wanna not wake up someday, you know? Until she knew that it wasn't God doing that, right? And, and it was the enemy. Using people through invisible spirits, you had a spirit following your line. So that's why when you married the second time, the same thing happened again. There was that invisible attraction. But now you've gotten the knowledge, right? Yeah. 
and the knowledge makes you feel much more empowered. You know what to do. You know what to do, right? Yeah. The, the, the victimization spirit. It'll be one of the lessons where we focus in, too. Too. Oh wow! So they, see, You're, it's mushrooming, eh? Snowballing, beautiful. Yeah. So um, I, I'm just going to ask if anyone else feels led to, uh, you know, uh, to keep um, these wonderful testimonies of what the Lord has done for us in our personal lives. Um, if anybody feels moved, if not, uh, well, you know, we certainly wouldn't want to keep you all night, kind of thing, unless there was a move of the Holy Ghost to do so. <laughs> But he respects our time as well. But if he wants to, if the Holy, it, does anyone have, feel anything bubbling up inside of them, like a tongue that might want to be interpreted? Because sometimes God wants to do that in a service. Eh? I know when I was on my way here, I felt there was going to be a tongue, a tongue and an interpretation somewhere tonight, that it was bubbling up, you know, somewhere. Um, lately, I've been led to more, being more sensitive to that, eh, when the Holy Ghost wants to do that. I remember we had Bert Farius here. He, he very much helped us to see that, that, that it's not just the message and it's not testimonies, which is excellent, but the Holy Ghost is here right now. We know he's here, uh, and he's moving, and he's listening to everything that we've just said, and he may want to say something back to us uh, and use a human vessel to do so. Yeah, we have uh, someone, uh, Florida. <clears throat> the thought came to me years ago. We read uh, Corey Ted Boone. It's okay. Uh, no, it's okay. Um, anyways, years ago, we, we heard the story of Corey Ted Boo in the hiding place. And uh, she was put in the concentration camp. Her father died there. Um, her sister, Bessie, died there. And uh, years later, uh, by, it says by a clerical error that she got out of the concentration camp. But she would go in, uh, and she would go into the prisons where these guys were in pits, and she would say, "There is no, there is uh, no uh, pit too deep that God cannot take you out of." And uh, I can relate a lot to your story about abuse of home and everything. I've shared my testimony. But God is so faithful. The Father loves us so much. When we come to know, I didn't have a proper father either or a mother. But when we come to know, when the Bible says God is love, uh, it's, it's for us to be able to receive that love. But when you're, <laughs> when you're damaged so much inside that your receiver is broken, but when God manifested, I used to pray to Jesus, but never to the Father, because I was terrified. I always thought God was standing up there, uh, was raised Roman Catholic, and every time you, you got out of line, you were hit. But when God the Father manifested his presence in my life, it was like liquid love. All the pain, all the sorrow, all the verbal abuse, everything, he made something beautiful. <coughs> out of my life. Amen. You know what, I'm, that's good, eh? Florida has wonderful testimony. I'm gonna step out in faith because I think the Lord was speaking to me when he was saying that there was a tongue. So I'm gonna step out in faith and I believe Gail, I think I heard the Lord say Gail will interpret it for us. Yeah. Roto hot tiche hasekaboroti. My soul is blessed. My love for you is everlasting, and I will never ever leave you. I am pleased. I'm pleased that you crave to be with me and to obey me. I am working in each and every one of you. I am building my end time army and greater works 
you shall do. All for my glory. Let's lift our holy hands. That was a holy word from the Lord. Holy moment. Holy moment. Thank you, Father God. Thank you that you blessed us with what you just said to us. Thank you that you helped me to have the courage to step out in faith. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's so precious when we hear you speak to us. It's so precious. It's like liquid honey. It's <laughs> What's more exciting than God Almighty speaking to us? I can't think of anything more exciting. Not just us speaking to him, but he speaks back to us. Praise God. Okay, so my wife uh, would suggest that she feels led to have Ron give us a closing prayer, the father of the house. What is more precious, Lord, that you bless us and your plan and your purpose for us is perfect and our destiny is birthed in your heart, just special for each one of us. And so, Lord, as we move away tonight, let that life, that destiny, that, that thing that you've planned for us continue to grow. Let nothing, nothing, nothing stop it, Lord. Till we come to that place where at the end of our day, you'll say, well done, good and faithful servant. And so, Lord, we take hold of all your promises. We take hold of all your gifts. We take hold of the Holy Spirit that we might be what you want us to be, that we might cause you delight and pleasure and be glad that you made man. And now as we separate, Lord, let the blessing of the Holy Spirit, the love of Jesus be upon us until we meet again. Amen. Amen. So you're dismissed. Uh, we'll be back November 15th to teach straight through.